Throughout the history of punk rock, there's always been a certain association with skate culture and extreme sports in general. Whether we're talking about the LA skate scene in the early 80s or the huge sponsored events in various video games in the 2000s, there's been a very large number of punk bands and athletes alike that have kept this trend going over the years. How's it going folks? My name is Jack Miller, I am the incredibly underqualified punk historian, and today I want to talk to you all about a subsect of punk rock that is very near and dear to my heart, skate punk. As much as I love to skate, I'm even less qualified to give a history lesson on skateboarding, so in this video I'm going to focus on the musical aspects of skate punk and talk about how it's changed over time and the impact it's had on punk music as a whole, and probably nerd the fuck out over some of my all-time favorite bands. If we're going to talk about the evolution of skate punk, I think it's best explained if we split it up into three separate eras. First we have what I'm going to call the Thrasher era from roughly 1980 to 1990, after that is the Epiphat era from around 1991 to 2003, and then finally the Tech era from somewhere around 2004 to the present. What I'm calling the Thrasher style of skate punk is still pretty reminiscent of the standard 80s punk sound. There weren't a whole lot of big distinctions between subgenres at this point since punk was still a pretty new genre overall. But I think a big piece of what set these bands aside from others is that their music seemed to be a little more structured and sometimes more complex than their peers. In this camp, we have a plethora of awesome bands and I could not possibly mention them all, but a few of my favorites include Gangrene, JFA, DI, all the Mystic Records bands like Ill Repute, Aggression, Rat Pack, and the painfully underrated legends of RKL, otherwise known as Rich Kids on LSD. I also want to mention the more metal-influenced Venice Beach stuff like Excel, The Brood, Beowulf, and possibly my all-time favorite band, Suicidal Tendencies. This trend of skate punk requiring stronger musical ability to play as opposed to other punk subgenres would only continue into following incarnations of the sound and it seems to me that the genre became even more technical as time went on. The late 80s were a bit of a transition period for skate punk, and though there were still a handful of bands doing the old school sound around this time, the genre kind of birthed two children, if you will. The older sibling is the famous crossover thrash sound, which was pioneered by Suicidal in the mid 80s. In retrospect, this stuff was kind of a blip on the radar, but it still has a huge cult following to this day in both the punk and metal communities. Plus, I really have to say, I think a number of bands that made the transition from straightforward punk to crossover actually release some of their best material in this era. A few of my favorite old school crossover albums include Suicidal's Lights, Camera, Revolution, DRI's Four of a Kind, Excel's Split Image, Poison Ideas' Feel the Darkness, and Uncle Slam's Say Uncle. Also, I know they were never really a full-on crossover thrash band, but RKL's absolute powerhouse of a record, Rock and Roll Nightmare, is definitely worth mentioning here too. I have to say, I really don't think I'm doing RKL the justice they deserve in this video, and a part of me really wants to dedicate an entire video to them in the future. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing a video about RKL. Anyways, the younger sibling to Crossover Thrash is the more widely known melodic sound that Bad Religion pioneered on their classic releases Suffer in 1988 and No Control in 1989. Although they certainly had a presence in the scene during the Thrasher era, I think it kind of goes without saying that Bad Religion had a much bigger impact in the late 80s and 90s. I also need to mention here that the other other skate punk godfather band No Effects made their full length debut with Liberal Animation in 1988 and then followed up with SM Airlines the year after as well. This more melodic sound is what I referred to as the epithet style of skate punk earlier, and once this stuff made its debut, it took the scene by storm pretty quickly. Quite honestly, I think this is the sound most people associate with the term skate punk. Stylistically, bands from the Epifat era of skate punk certainly displayed a similar and oftentimes superior level of playing ability as those from the previous era, but I think the biggest thing that set them aside from their predecessors were the incredibly engaging melodies. Things like vocal harmonies, sing-along choruses, and dual guitar parts were all of a sudden really common in punk, and for the time this stuff came out in, this was a brand new thing. Although Bad Religion and No Effects are definitely the blueprint for this sound, there's a zillion more phenomenal bands from this era. I could probably spend the rest of this video specifically talking about Epifat Skate Punk and how many rad bands that era spawned, so I'll do my best to keep it short and sweet. Much like Thrasher Skate Punk did at the end of the 80s, Epifat Skate Punk birthed two children of its own in the mid-90s. And just like before, we had one that was a little more grindy and one that was a little more jangly. While a lot of the crossover thrash bands were still going at this point, there wasn't really any new blood coming into the genre, especially since the larger thrash metal scene was in a similar state. Now that punk was on the rise though, the early to mid 90s gave us a different breed of aggressive skate punk through a chunkier and more metallic take on the no effects bad religion sound. The biggest name here is probably Pennywise, but a few other rad bands of this variety include Jugged's Revenge, Propagandi, 98 Mute, and the Satanic Surfers. I also want to mention the more hardcore influenced bands on the heavier side of skate punk like Ignite, Good Riddance, and Chicago's fucking OG's 88 Fingers Louie. I also, of course, have to mention The Offspring, and although they're pretty much pop-punk now and have been since Americana, they really were a band of this variety when they first came out. 
This video would not be complete if I didn't mention how their infamous album Smash was and still is the highest selling record to ever come out on an independent label. Say what you will about their newer material, but the genre would not be the same without the first few Offspring records. Then on the other side of things, there was a group of bands that took the same formula in the opposite direction and chose to crank up the melody and catchiness of their songs. A lot of these bands certainly have some harder stuff, especially in their earlier catalog, but the sound that would really become more of their signature sound was the more harmony-heavy sing-along type of tunes, often accompanied by some earworm-level guitar parts. Here I'm talking about the type of bands that made up the bulk of Fat Rex catalog in the mid-90s, like No Use for a Name, Big Wig, Frenzel Rom, Pulley, Lagwagon, and the greatest band of all time, Strung Out. Strung Out is fucking perfect, and I don't want to hear any old motherfuckers talking shit on them. They are the best thing to ever happen to music and to my ears. Bow before your gods! On a more serious note though, this era marked a certain turning point in punk rock history. At least at the time, Epifat Skate Punk offered a little something for everyone, from the suburban alternative kids to some of the more harder-edged punk fans of the previous generation. The genre was definitely more accessible, but it was still real, genuine punk music with origins in the same culture that birthed everything to come before. This stuff also had some more aggressive bands that could serve as a gateway into the harder side of punk music in general, and I think this also enabled a lot of bands from the previous generation to gain sizable followings amongst the younger fans. Plus, at this point, a lot of the more well-known skate punk bands from this era are classic punk bands, and it seems to be that hearing the music of bands like No Effects and Bad Religion is just as important for new listeners as The Clash, Bad Brains, and Black Flag. Of course, not everyone falls head over heels in love with this sound the same way I did, nor are all of these bands necessarily entry level. But the Epifat skate punk era is really one of those classic moments in punk history like CBGB's or DC Hardcore. I also want to point out that there was the whole pop punk scene of the 90s going on as well, with all the Ramones core and lookout bands like Screeching Weasel, The Groovy Ghoulies, and Jawbreaker. And now with these two really strong scenes of melodic punk, it was only natural that this era took the genre to its peak. I've already done a video on the old school pop punk stuff, so if you're interested, I'll definitely link that below. But I do want to point out a few bands that kind of fall in the gray area between skate punk and 90s pop punk like Snuff, 30 Foot Fall, The Vandals, and Face to Face that are all definitely worth a listen to. I also want to mention the more jangly twist on the street punk oi style that tended to cross paths with skate punk in the 90s. All the bands like Swingin' Utters, The Street Dogs, Anti-Flag, Rancid, and The Distillers that weren't quite gruff enough to be straight up street punk, but also weren't really crisp enough to be skate punk. I won't talk about this stuff too much here because I'm definitely going to cover street punk and oi pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that video too if you're into that kind of thing. I'd say the late 90s is when the super melodic side of skate punk really had its heyday. Alongside Green Day and Blink-182 blowing up around the same time, I think skate punk really had a lasting impact on what a lot of us would consider to be modern pop punk. I guess all the TRL bands like Sum 41, New Found Glory, and Phoenix CX are pretty old school at this point, but this was kind of the first wave of the more pop-oriented pop punk. I have to say though, most of these bands seem to sound a lot more like a polished version of No Effects or Lagwagon than the Queers or Screeching Weasel or any of the other bands that would have been considered pop punk in the 90s. That being said, the TRL era of pop punk was kind of the end of the Epifat skate punk glory days. The TRL bands were hugely more accessible and it's only natural that the more authentically punk sound would go back to a more niche underground scene. Now a lot of people seem to think skate punk froze at the end of the Epifat era and that the underground scene hasn't changed since the year 2000, but I for one find that hilarious because I would absolutely love to see the Epifat stuff make a comeback into the scene, especially since I wasn't around when it was big. On that note, we now arrive at the third and relatively recent era of skate punk, which is what I like to call the tech era. In terms of popularity in the underground, I'd say this sound started to gain traction around 2003 or 4. But if I had to point to one place of origin for this style, it would have to be Propagandi's 2001 album, Today's Empire is Tomorrow's Ashes. I'd say this album is actually the reason Propagandi is so universally loved in the punk scene the way they are now. Their previous albums are by no means bad or generic, but this is really what put them on the map as more of a punk staple as opposed to just another 90s fat rec band. Although I'm referring to this sound as tech punk, the abundance of shreddy guitar riffs and complicated drum parts certainly aren't the only things that set this stuff aside from the previous generations of skate punk. I'd say overall this is a much more mature sound than the Epifat style, which is only natural since the bands that pioneered it were actually veteran bands from the Epifat days. But I'd also say melodic punk as a whole was becoming a more serious genre and even with the younger bands. In the mid-2000s, punk got really political. Bands like Rise Against, Anti-Flag, and Billy Talent were at the top of their game, and a lot of older bands like No Effects, Lagwagon, and Strung Out were growing into a more serious musical tone as well. With all of this going on, it was only natural that skate punk adapted a more technical and polished sound to accompany the more mature, thought-provoking lyrical themes. This kind of seems weird to say, but in a way, this is the era punk grew up in, if you will. Following Propagandi's Empires, there were also some other bands like Belvedere and Wilhelm Scream that made the same transition from Epifat style into the tech punk sound as they got older. 
I'd say the first wave of strictly tech punk bands came out in the mid to late 2000s though. Poor Habit, Chaser, Strike Anywhere, Adrenalized, and No Trigger all made a reasonably sized dent in the underground scene. You'd also definitely catch a number of these bands playing Fest or any of the other core punk festivals each year before the COVID pandemic. I also want to mention the largely European 2010s group of bands like Straight Line, Darko, Heart Sounds, PMX, and Forest. Personally, I'm still exploring the catalog of most of these bands simply because I just haven't been aware of them for as long, but they're all certainly worth a listen if you're ever in the mood for some techie, metal-infused punk rock. This video also would not be finished if I didn't mention the German Konrad Fest that pretty much exclusively features tech punk bands. Unfortunately, I've never been since I've never been anywhere outside of North America, but it's definitely something on my bucket list. I will give fans of the tech punk stuff a little bit of shit from time to time, but it's only out of love because like I was hinting at before, skate punk overall is definitely the subscene I feel most grounded in. I'd say I probably listen to the Epifat era stuff the most, but I'm definitely hugely invested in the Thrasher and Tech eras too. Most of my favorite bands in my local scene also fall somewhere under the skate punk umbrella. And if I had to describe how my band sounds, I like to think we sound like a cross between Strung Out and Leftover Crack, as weird as that might seem. This stuff has also had the biggest impact on how I write my songs too, and most of what I've written in the past five years is borrowed pretty heavily from Strung Out and No Effects. The audience for this stuff is pretty chill too, and there's a lot less elitism here than in other punk scenes, and people don't take themselves too seriously either. There are of course a few douchey gear snobs that stick up their noses at local bands that aren't using super flashy equipment, but I don't think any underground scene is free from dorks like that. Well, I think that sums up our little crash course. I have to say I had a blast writing this one since this stuff is probably my favorite kind of music. But anyways, that's enough for me. I want to hear what you guys have to say. What are some of your favorite skate punk bands? Do you have a favorite era of the subgenre? If so, which one? Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.